If you had one thing to change about Africa, what would it be? Dependency on the West. Come back to Africa. Africa, there is nothing to change other than our mentality. There is nothing we don't have. Money is not out there. Money is in Africa. Gold, stone, food, free rain, rainfall, good weather. You walk around and you, f you eat without uh, spending a coin. So when they say that in Africa we live uh, on less than a dollar, I don't know whether they know how much food we eat. <laughs> a plate of our food, if I went to their restaurants, they would be buying it for 20 pounds. But here I am. I'm eating it three times a day. So we are rich. It's our mentality that better things are out there. No, the best things are within us and they are in our soil. It's good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> like, I, can't, I can't believe that there is a Kenyan living in Uganda. Okay. Because you guys are neighbors. You should just stay in Kenya. Why are you in Uganda? Yeah, but we are East Africans and we are allowed to settle anywhere we want. And how long have you settled in here? Uh, 23 years to be precise in Uganda, but not here. In the bush here, about uh, four or five years. You're living in the bush. What brought you to Uganda? Love. Oh, wow. Yeah. The people in here love it's you. powerful. Yeah, someone just came and told me, yeah, I love you. And I followed. But oh. he was also Kenyan. That time, he was a Kenyan. He came to work here. So I followed. And oh. I've never gone back, yes. So love brought you here? It did. So the love of your life still lives here? Still does. He's the wow. main investor. That's amazing. Where is he? Uh, in Kampala, but uh, over the weekend he comes to the farm. Hmm. Or maybe any other day when it is critical. How, as a farm manager. How is Uganda so far? That's beautiful. Nothing, nothing can make you go anywhere else. Okay, for me, I love the country. Don't you, ask me why I don't like Kenya. I do <laughs> in a special way, but uh, Uganda is more special. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been my next question. Yes. Uh, but, but you know, like when it comes to Africans here, yeah, yes. when you're looking for greener pastures, we don't think about the nearby country. I do, we think I do, about I do. go to the west. Yeah. If you settle in the nearby country, nobody told you that. Why Uganda? Yes, I, it's a bit magical, you know. Uh, yes, somebody who think that greener pastures are in UK, US, right, lately Saudi Arabia, but depends on what you're focusing on. The mm. beauty of life you're looking for. Mm. Specifically, I come from Mount Kenya region, that's where I was born, so I've been born in a farm. And uh, when I came and see, I saw these uh, green grass and trees which never dry up. That excited my heart and uh, I couldn't resist. This is your greener yes. pasture. And you know, let me tell you, there's some magic in Ugandan food. The matoke? You'll dam do the matoke and the binyebo, the groundnuts and the, the dodo. Uh, you'll never go back. There's the naturalness in their food. The fen, uh, you go harvesting fruits everywhere. You go back to the hunters and gatherers stage and it is modern world. You just feel nice. <laughs> <laughs> I just love you. What are you doing in here at the moment? Yes, uh, welcome to my farm. This Thank is you. my shambani. Mm. I settled here in uh, 20, 2018 to be precise. Yeah, but I was a telephone farmer before that. So just behind there are the, uh, are the goats which have kept me coming over to enjoy my life with the birds. You hear them sing? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Would you want to go and sing? Why not? Is that a tractor? Yeah, it is. It's a baby tractor. A baby tractor? <laughs> yeah. What do you use this for? Yeah, for carrying grass for the goats, for the feeds. Oh, I thought this is what you take you to Kenya. Yeah, would whenever you want, you want to, to go. To have a ride? No. To have a ride? Yeah. No, I just want to go back to Nairobi. <laughs> I can't take you. I, I miss yeah. Ugali. <laughs> the speed. Uh, <laughs> hey! It's just here. Just en ensure that the gear is free. How do I ensure that? Uh, shake it. Okay. Beautiful. Start it. Hey! Where, where's the horn? Okay. <laughs> No, the sound alone can tell you the tractor is coming. <laughs> <laughs> let, 
let me know how it all started. Okay, the history of the farm starts uh, as a private, uh, I would call it a family source of milk. Okay. Because I had kids, two boys who could not uh, handle the cow milk. They would always react to it. And therefore we go home for a holiday and uh, my mother-in-law gives us milk and uh, gives the boys milk and they don't react. The next day they don't react and we say, wow, goat's milk of all other things. And uh, the week they were safe. So we decided when we come to Uganda, let's have a goat. And oh. we got one goat, but it was lonely. It was uh, following us in the bedroom, in the toilet. Everywhere <laughs> you go, you have a goat as a dog. <laughs> so we decided to get two more and a male and uh, within six months we had uh, seven babies and 10 liters of milk it was excess we didn't need it we needed only two liters per day and therefore neighbors do you want some milk do you want some milk of course the rejection levels were very high but those who wanted it wanted it passionately so they weren't talking about it. Those who wanted passionately, you know, with the passion, mm. spreads. Mm. So they got people who said, yeah, where are you getting your goat's milk from? So the demand now becomes higher Hi. than what we have. We see an opportunity. We roll in. Here we go. But it is not as smooth as it sounds because uh, when we started, uh, we started in 20... 2013, I think our first goat was in 2012. Yeah, 2012. Uh, 2014, they multiplied so much, so they couldn't be contained in Kampala, Rubaga. So we brought them to the farm. We had just bought the few acres in the farm down near the lake. And they multiplied very fast to 124 goats. Hmm. Uh, in 2015, actually, we had uh, about 124 with other, other babies. <laughs> Telephone farming again, we didn't change any structure, we thought everything would be fine. Um, six months later, <laughs> we had 24 goats. They were all dead, 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 dead. And um, we picked up the 24, we brought them in the, the first structure because we were trying to expand when we saw the goats had started. So we felt that place was very cold, so let's expand to a drier place. So we were building this structure and by the time we came, we came with 24 goats. Very miserable goats. And three died later. We were left with 21. I would tell you, we would get babies, 41 babies, they all die. Why were they dying? You know, we were doing telephone farming. Nobody knew about diary goats. Uh, it was also very far for vets. And the project that time was so small to employ a permanent vet. And even if we had a vet who was visiting, they also didn't understand the dynamics of diary goats. They were more familiar with cows, pigs, dogs. But uh, treating a goat in Africa is not a, a normal thing. Goats browse. Goats never get sick. Exactly. So when you tell them to treat a goat, they would just treat like a cow and the death rate was massive. But we'll also say that it was partly negligence because uh, as they expanded, we should also have expanded the facilities mm. and also expanded the workforce, trained them, but well, we also trained. You know, this was a project which just sprang up. So, but we learned our lessons, that was school fees paid, and uh, we started from there. Probably we got a few more goats afterwards, but what you can see, comes now from the 20 goats which remained, plus maybe one or two goats which joined us, us later. The only um, changing factor was the, the males. We've had, since uh, 2016, we've had more than um, seven males, because for every one year and eight months, a male has to leave. Mm. That has changed continuously. But for the females, I think apart from the 20 which we started with, 2021, we've added maybe one or two. Yeah. Which I don't even remember which we added. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how many so, goats do you have now then? I think we have about uh, 200, and 200 plus on the females. Then we have about 60 something males. Diary goats. Diary. Huh? Diary. And uh, specific gene is um, the breed is uh, sunen. We prefer sunens. So we are going to the mothers and uh, we can go straight to the milking people. I'm sure they have not yet. Do you finished. have a cow here? 
Yes, we use those cows to feed our kids. What we do don't oh. use goat's milk to feed the goat's babies. We use cow milk to feed the cow babies. You use goat's milk? Ca goat's no. milk to sell. Yeah, but you use cow, cow milk, milk to, to feed. feed the goat's babies. So, you want mean, to ask why? Yeah, they don't eat grass. They are goats, why are they drinking milk? Okay, babies, we separate the babies from their mothers at five days. These are kids. The, okay, I would call these ones teenagers. The babies are the other side. We have two generations of babies or kids, mm. whatever you call them. Of course, in, uh, in English, they are supposed to be called, called kids, but a mother will call them babies. So they have, uh, from day five, mm. they are bottle fed up to four months. So every day somebody has to go and feed them. I think he is almost, he's finishing to milk and then he goes to feed them. He's actually there. Can we run and see how they are fed? What, what is he doing right now? Uh, now he's putting milk for the next batch. They go six, six, six. It's easier to feed them when they are few. Mm -hmm. these, these can take 15, but it will be very hard to control them. Okay. Yeah, so you'd rather have six, six, six until you're finished, and then you'll go to the babies and feed them also. This, this is the cow milk? Yeah, this is the cow milk. Yeah. Do you... As concentrated as it was milked, you don't dilute it at all. Yeah. Wow. But it has to be warm. Just like the way it comes from the cow, that temperature. Okay. So in case he has uh, leftovers, he has to dip them in warm water, in actual hot water, to get that right temperature. Hmm. Yeah. Ha! 28 to that. This is like feeding bottle, man. <laughs> wow. Never seen anything like this before. Trust me, never seen it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the magic of uh, bringing up kids. And uh, when you do this, you're able to detect when a kid is not feeding very quickly. Mm. Uh, because if a kid rejects milk and the way they love milk, you definitely know that the kid is sick. Oh. So immediately you have to start working on the mm -hmm. kid. Yes. But uh, when they are with the mothers, you can think the kid has fed and yet the kid hasn't fed. It's already oh. sick. Yeah. And there is a tendency. Finally, there's a tendency that immediately a mother gets sick, if it is breastfeeding, the kid also gets sick. sick. Yeah. Oh, they're in a hurry, man. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, every batch is six. Yeah, six, six. Okay. So these are the people who milk. So they have to come wash their hands again, pick the buckets, and then they pick the, one jerry can is having warm water. Okay. And then they put the milking salve on top so that it will be faster for them. Okay. And then the other hand is carrying the bucket, of course. So let us join them. How many times do you milk the goats in a day? Yeah, it's twice, just like a cow, morning, evening. By 8, they are supposed to be done. <laughs> and then um, by 4.30 to 5. Wow. Yes. I love the fact that they've taken hygiene precaution very seriously. I'm actually in the goat farmhouse where all the goats are here. And I can breathe, man. Like, it smells so good. I mean, you don't even smell anything. Wow. This is so cool. I have never seen um, goat's milk before. Never have I even tasted goat's, goat's milk. milk. I, 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 I'm a big fan of um, cow, milk? cow milk. Yes. So I want to know what is so unique about goat milk. Okay. The goat's milk, I may not be a scientist to explain the detail. And what I've also seen by experience is that once you take milk, the digestion is faster the evacuation is faster mm. compared to cow milk. Now, why do people complain, many people complain about cow milk? It's because the molecules are smaller and they kind of, it takes long to go down our zigzag in the stomach. And therefore they bloat as it's being digested. Now, the magic about the goats is immediately you take the, that milk, I would bet even the slowest digestion takes two hours. So it helps you even push what I'd refuse to go out. 
Don't mistake it with running. No. But what it does, it helps you digest quickly mm. and ex ex I mean, extract. I think from... And uh, many people are using it for weight loss. It's so hard. Please, what is the best way to lose weight without working out? Okay, but you can walking, uh, walking a lot and eating healthy. No, okay, I think I need to ask the question right. What is the best way to eat fufu banku and still lose weight? Yes. I found a remedy. <laughs> no exercise, just goat's milk. No. Ah. Eat carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your tummy down, <laughs> take goat's milk. <laughs> goat's milk can yes, make you reduce Yes, but it also right? has an opposite effect on babies, uh, especially the yogurt. The yogurt gives babies weight. And the milk, I don't know why it is opposite. Oh. When grown-ups take it, it reduces them. When the babies take it, they get better, probably oh. because babies keep on evacuating, they want food mm. every now and then. I have never known why. But we've had especially cases of special children who have been put on a diary goat's uh, meal. That is the yogurt and the milk. Mm. And within two months, the babies have gained tremendously. And you know, those babies are very difficult to, to have fresh. Eh? So that is what one of the farm, um, the people who encouraged us to continue, mm. they were using the goat's milk and we gave them some seed so that they can continue feeding their babies. On this. How many liters do you produce in a day? Uh, it should be between, depends on the season, uh, it should be between uh, 45 to 70. So now he is giving the supplementation after the milking. Oh. Yes. So the each each goat has a tray. Each goat. Each has goat has a tray. Oh, tray for food. For food, yeah. For and the, they, they, they have a bowl for water. Yes. These guys are chilling. <laughs> and they, they are living their best lives. Yeah? Huh? Like the the owner is a millionaire, you know. So they have their own milk, they, are, they have their own bowl for water and everything. Does it mean that the feed with the dairy goats and the ones that we know is different? I would the one for meat, is it the same? You'll feed them, but the returns, you know, you're calculating what the input versus the return. So in case you have to invest in this, because this is a high cost, mm. then are you able to return it? Definitely the meat goats will also love to eat this, but uh, will you be able to recover that? Okay. Yeah, we are able to feed this because every day they are giving us meal, uh, meal, oh. milk and they are giving us money. Is it, is it profitable? Yeah. I would say yes, uh, depending on your levels of operation and also depending on your goals. But basically, dairy goats are supposed to be profitable. Absolutely, they are supposed to be. Because even if you do simple maths... Let's do the simple math. Simple maths, a goat will give you, a, let's say, a minimum of 2 liters per day. You will sell a liter at 8,000, so that is 16,000. So if you are able to get... Uh, if, let's do a goat. So in the 16,000, even if you're supplementing one kilo of supplementation in the morning, one kilo is 1,000, another kilo. So you give supplementation of 2,000. You still have your 14,000. Then you have the labor. Water bills in case you have. I don't have water bills. So basically, it's supposed to be profitable. This looks like a male goat. Female, uh, what? Called 101 ah, when I was here, I was like, How can male goat be milking? <laughs> female, no. uh, the male goats are housed in a separate chamber. You see that place? Really? Yeah, they are completely separated from the females. One, because we don't want any smell. The, the, we, by the way, that is a detail in uh, when you're building. You need to ensure that the wind flows past. You don't allow the males to be in front of the females. They always need to be at the back of the females because they have that distinct smell. smell. And that smell can easily be transferred to the milk. So, and also that smell can make your goats keep on getting on heat when you don't want to. So you have to keep them at a distance and on the leeward side. Yes. And that's why they're caged there. When the wind comes, it comes from the lake definitely and it climbs Do, do you have a value addition? 
Yes, yeah, but uh, we don't do the value addition near the farm. We do it in Kampala. That's where our processing room is. Oh, wow. And then the products, basically the products are sold in Kampala. Even if I do the value addition here, you've seen the infrastructure to come he to here. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. The, 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 the struggles, man. The struggles. Okay, move, move, move. Move. It's not very nice and the distance, so you lose some products along the way. Oh, okay. And they need a lot of refrigeration. So we milk, refrigerate, ensure we have attained the temperatures. Then it is taken to the lake and within one hour, it's in the next fridge, ready for processing. Taken to, take to the lake? Yeah, we, we transport our milk through the lake. You have a lake here? We are on Lake Victoria. We are on the shores of Lake Victoria. We should be going wow. to the lake any How long does it take you uh, from, from the from lake? It's just 10 minutes. On, on water? On water and then it is in Kampala. So this is a playground for the, the kids. When others go, yeah. Hey. Then, go then out in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is good, yeah. a little bit soft life, eh? So all those babies who are on the other side also need an outing, so they are supposed to come and play here. They also don't eat from outside. They don't know how to eat from outside. Mm. So they come and play on the tires, and then they are returned back. They are feeding. Yeah, they are now feeding. And our babies have started knowing how to bite. Oh. Oh. Our two weeks old babies have started knowing how to bite, but that some are not completely. They are not interested at all, at all. Is, there a, is this a stage? Yeah, it's a, they are two weeks old, so they have not yet known how to eat. These ones are three months, almost, almost three months. And this one is our sick bay from here onwards. This is our sick bay. In case a goat is critical, it's brought here to recuperate. But right now we don't have any sick goats, so they are just sitting there as they wait to be pushed to these other sides. There are times when they get sick and you have to put them on a drip. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So you have to tie your drip, put it there, drop it, and ensure that the goat comes back. How does it feel like being a female entrepreneur in Uganda? And especially a farmer? Yeah. I would say it's a, it's a beautiful experience because I've also been uh, employed for a while. I retired in 2015. I retired in 2014 but released in 2015. So it feels nice to be in control but I'll also say that uh, it's a challenge. It's uh, quite a challenge especially for a startup. Mm. Because in as much as I was having the goods, I was not taking it as a business enterprise. For me, it was a hobby that time. That's where we could afford tre telephone uh, farming. But then it also becomes challenging when you really want to discuss issues about goods and you find that, oh, what does a woman know? <laughs> they feel that you have really not uh, been on the ground. And yet, you've actually been there more than the men who feel that they have been on the ground. But all the same, I would say the Ugandan community respects whoever it is, whether you're a man or a, a woman, a, a man or a woman, doesn't matter as long as you know your stuff. Mm. Yeah. Do you think Uganda has opened up for other Africans to invest in here? I would say absolutely yes, and I think our our country, I would call it our ah, country. Ah, you are Ugandan. <laughs> I know our country just love investors and, and uh, I don't think there is any sector which is closed because uh, personally I would want to say that the government has been very supportive. In case I have an outbreak here, I've never heard but anytime they detect that there is an outbreak in Mukono, the first person to call me is the DVO, the district veterinary officer. Hi Purity, Mashambane, are you aware that there is this and this happening? I say, oh no, I'm not aware. No, it has reached here. I need to come to your farm or I'm sending a vet to your farm to immunize your goats. And within five hours, the guys are here. So I would say that uh, it doesn't matter whether you are Nigerian, you are Ugandan, you're okay. as long as you're investing, you're employing Ugandans, you're feeding Ugandans, the government will always stand by you. Would you advise the youth of Africa to go into dairy, go dairy farming? It's a very big yes. And uh, when you look at my farm, basically I have only the youth. And I believe they're the ones who have the energy to do this type of work. Mm. You, as you've now seen now, is um, dairy goats are labor intensive. Mm. And they need some energy 
in some vigor. And uh, the beauty about uh, dairy goats is that uh, once you have your dairy goat, it has given birth. Once you start milking, you start getting the money immediately. So it's instant cash, which every youth needs. And uh, you don't need so much space. You saw the cubes? One times two. Yeah. One meter by one and a half, one meter by two meters. Every youth can be able to cut some shrubs and uh, make some structure. You don't need to have huge but capital. The youth really want to be rich. And we don't think agriculture can make us rich. Uh, goat meal, of course, if you want quick money, farming, generally farming, is not for quick money. It is for those people who want to grow tremendously. Farming as a business, uh, you must have patience. It is not a quick fix. Yeah, but if you're looking at sustainability and also as you're also looking for something to do, you can start doing the goats. Would I say that uh, my son is very passionate about goats? He's in the university, but uh, he's very keen to come and run the farm immediately. He's done because wow. for him, he believes there's a lot of future in this farm. My daughter, when she comes, she's called Christine. My son is called Bindo. Actually, Bindo is the is the owner of all those machinery you've seen at home. He's the one who drives the tractors, cuts the mows. Any weekend, he's at the farm to ensure that uh, he runs. So basically, the farm has a succession plan. Hmm. The kids are very, very passionate. The tractor we are driving in the morning is for my little son who is in secondary school. He's called uh, Mogo. Yeah. So each one of them has their machinery to run the farm. When they come, one is stealing on their side, or the other one is stealing on the other side. <laughs> If my sons don't convince you, if my daughter doesn't convince you that uh, dairy goats are profitable, no one else will. Right now, my daughter is in charge of packaging wow. at Kampala. Yeah, she's running quality control. Um, if you have your final message to Africans, what would that message be? Love your, your, your continent. Love and cherish it and put all your effort into developing yourself, develop your village, develop your country, develop the continent. If you can't grow food, keep a goat. Let it roam around. Put a chicken somewhere. It will scratch, it will feed itself. But have some animal. That is our social capital. Hmm. You won't believe that it's a dry season in Uganda <laughs> and it's still green. <laughs> You they believe. say, I accept, I accept your question. Yesterday when I was coming in from Kenya, <laughs> Kenya is scorched. And when we entered Uganda, people are saying, oh, these people are now planting seasons. The Ugandans said, no, this is a dry nice season is in it? Uganda. <laughs> we don't know what we have. Ugandans are saying it's dry. Other people are saying this is heaven. <laughs> Uganda is blessed. Don't you think so? I think so too. Yeah. If you want to buy um, goat milk, where do you reach out? Uh, it's called NutriFit, uh, NutriFit Goat's Milk, NutriFit Goat's Yogurt. We do direct deliveries. Direct deliveries. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe every part of this awesome channel. <laughs>